So first of all, we need to talk about fatty acids. And fatty acids are naturally occurring. This is biochemistry, biological chemistry we're talking about. So we're pretty much only talking about naturally occurring compounds. So these are naturally occurring monocarboxylic acids. And they almost always have an even number of carbon atoms. And the reason that they have an even number is because of how they're made. And we'll look at that when we get to metabolism. But they are made in a way that it's, it adds two carbons at a time. So it's very unusual to find an odd number of carbons in the chain. So they have a long chain, usually 12 to 26 carbons. A medium chain fatty acid is 6 to 11. And a short chain fatty acid is 4 to 6 carbons. So, you know, we just classify them that way. 26 carbons is a pretty long chain. Here's, here's an illustration of a saturated fatty acid, sometimes abbreviated SFA. And in this one, the, the carbon chain contains only single bonds. So here's that monocarboxylic acid, and attached to it is a long carbon chain, just a long, boring carbon chain. Another way we can write it is this way, where we take the CH2 groups and we count them all up, and we put them in parentheses and write how many of them there are. So this gives us a more compact structural formula. It's like a condensed, condensed structural formula. And saves us all the counting of zigzags and things. So saturated fatty acids only contain single bonds. A monounsaturated fatty acid, or a MUFA, looks like MUFA, MUFAs have one double bond. And the naturally occurring ones are almost always a cis double bond. So here's an example of one that has a cis bond in it. There's no rotation around that double bond. And so this puts a permanent kink in the chain. And that kink affects the physical properties of the fatty acid because it affects how it can um, line up with other fatty acids and interact with them through intermolecular forces. That ends up being a 30 degree bend. Here are two other ways of representing this same fatty acid. This one is uh, oleic acid. Its IUPAC name is cis-9-octadecenoic acid. Decenoic acid, that's what it is. Octadecenoic acid. The IUPAC names for these guys get really long. Here in this condensed, condensed, we're gathering up these CH2 groups, there's seven of them, and we're lumping those together. Here's the double bond, kind of in the middle, and then there's another seven CH2 units over here. Or we can look at the skeletal formula, the line angle diagram. We can also have polyunsaturated fatty acids. So we've got MUFA and PUFA. <laughs> in here, the carbon chain contains two or more double bonds. Um, we usually use the common names for the fatty acids because the IUPAC names are pretty long. So in these unsaturated fatty acids, um, the position of the double bond is important. And there are two different shorthand notations for specifying the, the especially the number of double bonds, but also their position. So if we use two numbers separated by a colon, such as 18 colon 0, the first number tells us how many carbon atoms are in the fatty acid, and the second number tells us how many double bonds. This doesn't tell us where the double bond might be. So 18 colon 0 signifies a C18 fatty acid with no double bonds. If we want to specify where the double bonds are, so here an 18-3 would be 18 carbons containing three double bonds. And then in parentheses, we put the Greek letter delta. And as a superscript, we put the number of the carbon atoms where the bonds, double bonds, start. So this is, this notation is describing this molecule. So this, here's the carboxylic acid. And when we number that, traditionally we start with the end that is includes the carboxylic 
carbon and we number it this way and as we come this way we find that the double, first double bond starts at carbon 9, the second one at 12, and the third at 15. So we call it 18,3, delta 9, 12, 15. <laughs> Just a shorthand. And we'll, we'll see these shorthands in some of the diagrams and things because they're more descriptive than the actual names. There are also some families of unsaturated fatty acids. And, and when we talk about these families, we look at the double bond position not relative to the carboxylic acid end, but to the methyl end of the, carb, of the fatty acid. So if we look at this guy right here in the middle, this is 20 colon 5, meaning there are 20 carbons and 5 double bonds. But what we're interested in, in terms of these families, is where is the double bond that's closest to the methyl end? And so here, that double bond is on the third carbon. So this is called an omega-3 fatty acid. And there are also omega-6 fatty acids. And you may have heard these terms because they're thrown around a lot in terms of nutrition. So omega-3 fatty acids will always have a double bond starting at the third carbon from the methyl end. Now the rest of this can be longer or shorter, and it still is included in the omega-3 category. In the omega-6 fatty acids, that, that double bond will be on the sixth carbon from the methyl end. So here are three different members of this omega-6 fatty acid family. This is 14, 1, 18, 2, and 23. So the number of double bonds varies, the number of carbons varies, but what's similar in them is where the last double bond is relative to the end of the chain. Okay, and that is significant for some biological processes. Uh, fatty acids that have this part in common do some similar things. So here's a nice table giving us um, some fatty acids of biological importance. There are others as well, but these are the ones that are, are the most important in, um, in biochemistry. So here's the structural notation, just that shorthand. For the saturated fatty acids, there's no double bonds, so we don't need any delta notation. They have common names, and those are what is usually used. Lauric acid, myristic acid, palmitic, steric, and arachid... arachid <laughs> I'm used to arachidonic. This is arachidic acid, I guess. I don't know. I don't remember seeing that one before. But these are just varying chain lengths of fatty acids. So notice that they're even, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Um, the monounsaturated are going to have one double bond. Both of these um, have it at the ninth carbon, counting from the carboxylic acid end. But that would put these in the category of omega-7 and omega-9. Omega-7, because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The omega is counting from the other end. Um, in the Greek alphabet, alpha is the first letter, and omega is the last letter. So omega kind of signifies we're counting from the opposite end. And then we have polyunsaturated, and these have varying numbers of double bonds. Um, these names, these common names, are related to each other. Both of these are 18 carbons. This is linoleic acid and this is linolenic acid. Very similar. And then there's oleic acid, which has one double bond. Arachidonic acid is related to this guy. I need to look up that pronunciation. And then we have these really, really kind of big guys down here. These are omega-3s. That's an omega-3, and there's a couple of omega-6s in there. You may need to refer to this table frequently to, to do some of the homework problems. Um, and you don't need to memorize this table. If you need this information for an exam, I'll give it to you. Personally, I don't remember the formula for steric acid. Uh, you should recognize, perhaps, the names of these as being fatty acids, but 
that's good enough. So, let's do an exercise. Classify the fatty acid with the following structural formula in the ways indicated. So, this guy right here, what is the type designation? Is it an SFA, an MUFA, or a PUFA? Remember what these stand for? Saturated fatty acid, mono unsaturated, or polyunsaturated. This would be monounsaturated because there's only one double bond. So this is a MUFA. On the basis of carbon length and degree of unsaturation, what's the numerical shorthand? This is the two numbers with the colon in between. Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So what would we call this one? 12 colon 1. 12 carbons, 1 double bond. To which omega family does this belong? Omega 3. That's omega, it's kind of a curvy W. Omega 3. Because with the omega business, we, we count from the other end, 1, 2, 3, and where that first double bond is, omega whatever, that's the family. What's the delta designation for this guy? So it's 12, 3, I'm sorry, 12, 1, and then in parentheses, delta what? Did you say 9? Yeah, I, just, I believe you. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Yeah. So just a 9 as a superscript. There's only one, so then there's only one number. So you need to understand these designations. I don't, that's, that doesn't really require a lot of memorization. Memorizing the structures of all those fatty acids with the common names, that's too much. That's, that's not useful. But understanding what these designations are and being able to look at a structure like this and understand how to apply these things, I think that is, is very helpful. You know, if I gave you a designation like this, 12, this is a really sad, it's a sad colon, there we go. 12, 1, delta 9. From that designation, you should be able to draw this, right? Because it's telling you where everything is. This is much shorter than trying to deal with IUPAC names. There are IUPAC names for all of these guys. But they get pretty long and hairy, so we just don't use them. Any questions?